Today I would like to talk to you about my vision of the iPad as a musical instrument. Recently I composed a concerto for the iPad with the orchestra. So you have a you know, whole orchestra on stage and the iPad is there. She's sitting next to the conductor and playing along with the orchestra behind her just as if it was a violin or piano, typical thing. And um, that was performed just last week in, in Rotterdam in the Doolin and also in the Musikgebouw in Amsterdam. And I'd like to show a little clip of that video, of that performance, uh, before I talk more about the iPad as a musical instrument. So. Um, okay, so we see what it is a little bit, and you may be asking yourself, well, why the iPad, and, and what have I been doing with it? Um, first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. As a, my background, I was originally trained as a classical flute player, classical and jazz, and, um, and then I became a composer, and so my experience was all about playing an instrument. And, and that's about, you know, the actions of playing and, and you're, you have the sound coming out and you're moving your fingers, your emotions, you're, you're showing expression on stage in front of people. And, and of course, I've sat in a lot of concerts, which you probably have too. And, and for me, that's always what uh, the live experience was for playing an instrument. And if we take a look back at the history of electronics and computers with music, it was already in the 1920s that the first electronic instruments were being built. And, uh, and they were being explored by composers already from the beginning. And uh, in the 1950s, computers came along and composers were always using those to develop new sounds and ways to interact with instruments. But you never saw a computer really on stage um, performing. And, you know, why is that? If you think about, like, a, a violinist who stands there in front of you and he draws the bow along the string and they use the, the hand, the right hand, left hand for vibrato, it's very expressive. And, and, and that's a really uh, great part about the way music is communicated and emotions are communicated from the performer to the listener. And now, Imagine someone sitting behind a laptop on stage with the, with the keyboard and the mouse, you know, and some sound coming out. It just doesn't have that same directness. And, um, and that was always uh, my feeling about it, is while I always, was always very interested in the sounds that were made by computers and, and the possibilities for new sound and, and ways of looking at that and manipulation of sound, I was never so interested in it as a life live um, uh, performance uh, instrument until recently. Then came along this iPad, um, which is essentially just a touch screen with a computer. However, this is a very big difference in my opinion because when you have this uh, touch screen, you, you know, you, you, have, you put your hands on there, move your hands, the sound changes, people see it, it, it it's all the elements in my definition of a, of a musical instrument. And so that's when I thought, oh, this has some possibilities. And I started to get excited about uh, working with it as a composer. Um, <clears throat> the other uh, aspect, which is very important to this particular touchscreen um, and computer, is the, the possibilities to be working with different applications. So because of the open nature of the way the iPad works is anyone can write a program for it and once it's accepted, it's then available through this amazing distribution system uh, for anyone around the world. So in the, in what you have then is uh, anyone can make an app or a music app and there are thousands of them. I, I haven't counted, but there's a whole bunch out there. And, you know, your only limitation is the creativity. And if you think about typical instrument design, it's usually done by one person who's working with either the software or you have a small team of people working. Here we have the whole earth, you know, of programmers and inventors and 
project developers coming up with new apps to make music. And there are some really interesting ones um, which have been made. Um, so in my opinion, we've kind of reached a, a watershed moment in terms of using computers for uh, live performance because of the combination of the design, the concept, and the technology in this, in this device, which is now the iPad. Um, so, well, let's check it out a little bit and see how it works. So we have the, okay, F first we will put the, okay. Susanna is going to play a little bit. We have the video going. Okay, so what you can see is she has a, basically a keyboard here. And, uh, well, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but please uh, go ahead, play some. This is an app called Geosynth by Wisdom Music. And um, what's interesting about it is it's a sort of a combination between a piano keyboard and a guitar strings where you have different frets. So she can move horizontally to like you do on a piano, but she can also move vertically on this two-dimensional surface to, to, to access different notes. And that is, has become a really interesting controller to, to make all kinds of different uh, melodic uh, combinations. Well. And one of the other really interesting things about this app, because you're, you're just programming, you can do whatever you, whatever you want very easily, they put in this trick whereby you can, you can repeat one motion and then you can go up and down octaves really easy. So you can, you can go from really low notes to really high notes very easily, whereas on the piano you would see someone go like this or the violin, which is of course very exciting, but here you can do these incredibly virtuosic passages very easily. Next, I'd like to show you an app called TC11 by BitShape Software. And uh, this is a, a, a very interesting app which is really designed for the iPad. And it's all about moving gestures of your hands over the surface and that manipulating the sound. Um, so, yeah. And you can see that it's also very attractive visually. And so that's something which I use in the piece that we have, as you saw, there was a screen behind the orchestra and the second movement of this concerto is all about visual applications of, of music. Um, uh, another uh, interesting uh, app, which is, was maybe <laughs> kind of a fun app, but which I used in this piece is called Loop by, um, uh, Canadian developer called Monolith, and it's really simple. You just have a you have a space. You touch it, and circles are created. We can now have the iPad. Now, when I look at this, I, I hear okay, we have very sparse rhythm based on the, the distance of the circles. 
Now, what I was interested in, well, let's see if we can make a different rhythmic layer. And so when we add circles closer, you can get faster rhythms. Can you hold off on that one? I'll tell you. <laughs> and then we add another layer for faster rhythms. So this was for me an interesting way to create different rhythmic layers based on how the, we place these circles. And well, I've never done anything like that in music before. And so that was really exciting for me to, to look at these maybe fun apps and see how I could do something uh, creative with it. Uh, the third movement is about rhythm, uh, rhythmic sounds. And so we'll go back to this app TC11 and I want to show you a couple more percussive uh, sounds. There we go. So this is just a really simple uh, a little beep, but then it, as you put two fingers on, then the sound changes, and then you get a completely different sound. And so these really small details can create very big differences, and, and that's really interesting, you know, when you think about instruments, and maybe you need a whole other drum to make a new sound. Well, here they just program it so you do a slightly different uh, control method, and it creates a whole new sound. Let, and now let's do a little bit of scratch. This is an app called Scratch. And, uh, and it's really simple. She just scratches the screen and you get a scratch sound. But uh, you know, this, there's all kinds of possibilities for those things. So um, I was really excited. Um, the last uh, app I'd like to show you is one called MadPad. And this is basically a video sampling software. Um, and so in the, in the last movement, there are cadenzas, and she does these cadenzas, and to make these cadenzas, what we did is we went around and we made little videos of the orchestra players um, playing the part. And then in the cadenza, you just see they, the orchestra stops, and then she kind of manipulates them, the little videos back and forth. <laughs> the orchestra got a kick out of that. Um, so, well, that's basically what I want to tell you. But before I end, I just want to say a few comments about the iPad in, uh, in general. I looked this up yesterday, and by the end of this year, there are, are going to be more than 100 million iPads sold around the world, and uh, which is kind of astonishing when you think about it as a musical instrument, because how many pianos are, in, are there in the world? I'm sure not even 
throughout the history of the piano, there are not even so many pianos, as far as I can tell. And uh, um, so all of a sudden, we have this possibility, which is, which is everywhere. And I think that's really interesting. Um, another interesting element about it, when you think about uh, the Stradivarius violin, which maybe you've all heard of. It's a unique, rare instrument made in Italy a couple hundred years ago. They've made a, a, a limited number of them, and they are the, among the most uh, expensive and rare instruments uh, which you can get today. And so, you know, they, they cost millions. And then here we have this thing, which is relatively cheap and, and ubiquitous. And so it's, I think that's very interesting for the new possibilities. I think also in education, there are a lot of um, uh, interesting possibilities to make programs to teach music to children. And so, and um, while, of course, it's not to replace a piano or a trombone or bass clarinet, I think there are some really interesting uh, uh, possibilities. And as a composer, I'm excited to explore them further. Thank you very much. And <laughs>